number of a million. In the Bible, what is the last book of the Pentateuch? Psalms, Deuteronomy, Jonah, John. Deuteronomy. Why is this it? Just am. Um, I read a lot. A long time since I've read the Bible. You got £125,000. If you give me a wrong answer, you lose £93,000. And a play. Final answer. Final answer. You just won a quarter of a million! Mm. You can't do, look, line, do not look at Chrissy. Do not look at your wife. Can we send her a business card? <laughs> <laughs> you were certain, weren't you? You knew yeah. it. There's the cheque. Have a look. It's got your mm. name on it. Sorry. Pay that into the bank first thing tomorrow morning. Kim Topman, £250,000. But we don't want to give you that. <laughs> I'll put it there for now. You've got a quarter of a million at this moment. Next question is worth £500,000. If you did go for it and give me a wrong answer, you would drop £218,000. All right, Kim. Oh, fine. <laughs> OK. <laughs> question number 14. You have no lifelines, but this is worth £500,000. Here it comes. What was the middle name of actor James Dean? Byron, Burns, Blake, Browning. I have absolutely no idea. You seem almost happy. <laughs> well, it wasn't a question that I was tempted to go for. There's no way I'm going for that. Oh, one, go on. <laughs> go on, have a little right. dibble dibble with me. Go on. <laughs> um, no, thank you. No, I think it's time some of these good people had a go. Final answer, you can take the money. I will take the money, please, Chris, and thank you very much. You've been brilliant. Give him a huge hand, Kim Tottenham. You can take this now. Goes away with this check for £250,000. That's what you've done, that's what you achieved. <laughs> and you just came for a nice day. Oh. I can tell you, and I can tell by the look on your face, Kim, you okay. couldn't care less, but no. I can tell you that James Dean was actually James Byron Dean. <laughs> couldn't care. Could you? No, not at all. No, I'm very <laughs> happy for oh, him. <laughs> Give him a huge hand. He goes away a quarter of a million better off. Well played. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nine contestants remaining. Time now to play fastest finger first. Remember, four answers, only one correct order. Get that order right in the fastest time. And you'll be next this Sunday night to play for a possible £1 million. Here comes the next question. Starting with the smallest, put these pre-decimalisation coins in order of value. Shilling, farthing, guinea, crown. OK, let's see. Let's see the... Uh, we've got nine contestants left this Sunday night. Let's see the right order first, starting with the smallest. A uh, farthing was a quarter of an old penny worth um, virtually nothing, actually. Shilling, uh, 12 old pennies. Crown, 5 shillings. Uh, guinea, 21 shillings. Right, that's the right order. Now, nine remain from last night. How many got it right? These were correct. Not many. One, two, three. Who was fastest? Phil Middleton in 6.10 seconds. <laughs> So, this is Phil Middleton, a senior prison officer from Worksop in Nottinghamshire. Up in the audience is his wife, Anne, watching back at home. is their 12-year-old daughter, Vicky. Phil is an amateur singer. 
And despite occasionally looking like Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, <laughs> that's Phil as a Gilbert and Sullivan pirate, by the way. He's known to his workmates as Baldrick. Uh, when it comes to millionaire, he insists he does not have a cunning plan. Instead, he's going to put all his trust in the lucky gnome he's had since he was a boy and which proved its power when he forgot to take it with him on his honeymoon. Is that right? Let's have a look at it. Hello, Chris. How old are you now? Uh, 42 in July, Chris. <laughs> and you've had this since you were a little boy? Since I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> what happened on your honeymoon then? So you forgot to take it? Uh, well, we uh, spent two days in Stansted Airport. It uh, was all right for a wedding night, it's okay. Well, we should have been in Jamaica, but Hurricane Gilbert flattened the island the day we should ah. have landed. So, because you didn't take your gnome. The earth moved, Chris. Well, <laughs> probably <laughs> not for me to pry. So Anne spent the wedding night with Gilbert, basically, more or less, or yeah. something like that. <laughs> okay. Phil, at this point, is just 15 correct answers away from winning one million pounds. He has three brand new lifelines to help him on his way. He's got 50-50, he can phone a friend, and he can ask this audience. Phil, lots of luck, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Question number one is for £100. Which of these is a mock title used for a self-important person in authority? His ribs, his bibs, his nibs, his fibs. His nibs, Chris. So right answer, you've got £100. <laughs> Question number two, you've got those lifelines, you probably won't need them, there are no trick questions, this is for 200 quid. In the well-known saying, practice makes what? Passion, paradise, pleasure, perfect. It's perfect, Chris. It's the right answer, you've got 200 pounds. <laughs> Question number three is for 300, here it is. Which word is often used by actors to simulate background conversation? Rhubarb, cauliflower, gooseberry, sprouts. It's rhubarb. Not sprouts. No, rhubarb. Sprouts, 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 sprouts. It's the right answer, you've got to go the pants. <laughs> rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. <laughs> Number four is for 500 quid. Here it comes. Which of these is a form of explosive? Gamara, Jamanda, Jellignite, Geomancy. It's Jellignite. It's right answer, you've got 500 pounds. <laughs> you've got all three lifelines, this is question number five. Which toy is a set of hollow figures that each split in half to reveal a smaller version of the same? Italian marionette, Russian doll, French puppet, Swiss mannequin. Russian doll. Sure. sure. Final answer? Final answer. It's good. You've got £1,000. Well played. <laughs> Quick gulp of water. Took a nice big breath then after a thousand, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> OK, guaranteed £1,000. You can go back to workshop with your, your head held high. Uh, you've got a three lifelines. Question number six is for 2000 Who played Alexis Colby in the TV series Dynasty? Linda Gray, Stephanie Beecham, Joan Collins, Jane Wyman. Soap's not a strong point of mine, Chris. <laughs> Do you remember it? Do you remember the series? I do, yes. I, do. I remember the, actually watching it with names. I go 50 50, Chris. You can. Computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Phil the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Has that helped? Not a lot. No. Ah. <laughs> I'll go to the audience, Chris, if I can, please. OK, audience, uh, this is your chance to get Phil up to £2,000, please. All in your keypads, this is the question, who played Alexis Colby in the TV series Dynasty? B or C, all vote now. Well, 95% is quite high. 
I'll go with that, Chris. Don't you mind? Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got two thousand pounds. <laughs> Question number seven is for four thousand pounds. You're only nine away from a million. This is for four thousand. Where did the Brinks Matt robbery of 1983 take place? Now, as a prison officer, <laughs> you might know this. If I get this wrong, I'll never be able to get back to work. <laughs> Victoria Station. Watford Gap Services. Heathrow Airport. Dover Ferry Terminal. Heathrow, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> You got four thousand pounds, as I remember. They got rather, rather a lot more. <laughs> right. Question number eight is for eight thousand. You're still hanging on to that phone, a friend. Have a look at this. Tell us if you want to try and double your money. In which county is the town of Chesterfield? Ooh. <laughs> How far do you live from Chesterfield? Seven and a half miles. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking down here, thinking, works up Chesterfield. So, if you would have got Lynch for getting the last one wrong, this one's even worse. Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, Warwickshire. But are there any nasty little borders during that seven and a half miles? Um, they all meet fairly close to my house. Three counties meet at one particular uh, spot, but um, it's in Derbyshire. You're in Nottinghamshire? Only just. But well, seven and a half miles gets you across to Derby. Chesterfield's in Derbyshire. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You got eight thousand. <laughs> well, that's helped, hasn't it? <laughs> it's the luck of the draw. It's what comes out of the computer. One minute you're down in the dumps, the soap question comes up. The next two couldn't have been more useful. Question number nine. This is suddenly getting to be serious money. Question number nine is sixteen thousand. Have a look. A tilde is a symbol used in which of these languages? Spanish. German, Russian, Japanese. It's going to have to phone a friend, Chris. OK, now who can help? Tony Ray. OK. Uh, tell her the question, four possible answers. Uh, it's for £16,000. What does he do? Would he use languages? What does He's he do? a headmaster of my daughter's primary school. So no pressure on him then. Hello. Tony. Hello. Hi, hello. Hello. <laughs> Tony, it's Chris Tarrant here. Good evening. Hello, Chris. How are you? Well, I'm fine. It's very loud. At your end of the phone, are you all right? Fine, thanks. OK, now, Tony, uh, I've got Phil here. That's obviously, uh, you've gathered that. Phil uh, is doing OK. He's in the chair. He's on £8,000. Right. But he's stuck. I'll do my best. All right, mate, that's all you can do. It's for £16,000. Next voice here will be Phil's. You tell her the question. There are still four possible answers. OK. Thanks, Chris. OK, 30 seconds, Phil. Lots of luck. Your time starts now. Hi, Tony. Hi, Phil. A tilde is a symbol used in which of these languages? Spanish, German, Russian, Japanese. Say the first bit again, Phil. A tilde. T tilde? I yes, T-I-L-D-E is a symbol used in which of these languages? Spanish, German, Russian, Japanese. You got eight seconds, Tony. I'm sorry, Phil. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Phil. I can't get it. That. That's all right. <laughs> no, I'll take the money, Chris. Have you got any inkling at all? <sighs> to be fair, no. I, I, if it was any, I'd guess at German, but I'm not guessing with that. That's. I'll take the money. Final answer. Take fine, money. fine lines to take the money. OK, give Phil a big hand. He goes away with £8,000. <laughs> and I can tell you, if you've said to me German, <laughs> you just lost £7,000. The right answer was actually Spanish. <laughs> Cheers, well played, mate. £8,000, well played. Thank you. So, Phil Middleton calls it quits, goes back to workshop uh, with £8,000 and his lucky gnome. Now, we've got eight players left. Fast finger first again, here comes the next question. Starting at the head, put these body parts in order. Heart, larynx, cerebellum, tibia. OK, 
Okay, let's have a look. We've got eight left. This is the right order then, starting uh, at the top, starting at the head. Uh, cerebellum first up there, and then, then it's the larynx, uh, that's the throat, then it's the heart and the chest, and then the tibia is in the leg. That's the right order. Now, eight start. How many got it right out of eight? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four. Who was fastest? Sue Mitchell in 8.64 seconds. <laughs> Will you pay for a million pounds? Of course I do. <laughs> so here we have Sue Mitchell, a health visitor from Camberley in Surrey, up in the audience, looking very proud, is her husband Trevor, while watching back at home are the kids, Daniel and Rebecca. Sue says Trevor is the intelligent one and he should be here in the hot seat instead of her. I couldn't push him to, to pick up the phone, Chris. Really? Yes. OK, well, now, listen, I want to crack on. 15 questions, three new lifelines, £1 million. And they'll all be yours, none for Trevor. OK, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, Sue, so question number one for £100. Here it comes. You've got all three lifelines. Here we go. What does the word rep stand for in the occupation sales rep? Representative. Repellent. Replacement. Republican. Representative Chris. The right answer, Sue, you got a hundred pounds. <laughs> you got a hundred pounds, this is for two hundred quid. What name is given to the triangular upper part of a wall at the end of a ridged roof? Gable. Fable. Cable. Table. It's Gable, it's Chris. Gable, you got two hundred pounds. <laughs> Question number three is for 300. Have a look, here it is. Which of these is a type of small dog kept as a pet? Thigh dog, lap dog, knee dog, leg dog. Lap dog. Lap dog, you're 300 pounds. <laughs> Question number four is for 500 quid. Here it comes. Plates of meat is a traditional Cockney rhyming slang for what? Feet. Feet. Wheat. Cheat. It's feet. It's the right answer, me old plates of meat. For 500 quid. <laughs> Question number five is for £1,000. Which of these signs appears on a standard Monopoly board? No waiting. Bus stop. Roadworks. Free parking. Free parking. Sure. It's the right answer, you've got £1,000. <laughs> Well, that's it. Well, that's guaranteed.